As you can see from today's video, I am going to go through an overview of five very important topics. That would be mass, weight, energy, work, and power. Before I get started, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel, Step by Step Science, get all my excellent physics, chemistry, and math videos. When I look at my YouTube, as I see that so many people who watch my videos have not subscribed, so please subscribe. Support my channel, click the notifications bell, give us a thumbs up, leave us a nice positive comment, and don't forget to share this video. In addition to that, I made a bunch of other teaching and learning materials, which you can find on my Teachers Pay Teachers website. It's all there, whether you're looking for example problems, practice problems with all the solutions, notes for a bunch of different topics, puzzles, fun things to do, activities to do with PGT at Interactive Simulations. It's all there at my Teachers Pay Teachers website, and the link is in the description below. Now, I have also made detailed videos about each of these topics, which you can link to some of those in the upper right-hand corner, and I'll also put links to each of them in the description. But in this video, we're going to do a quick overview for mass, weight, energy, work, and power. And of course, we're going to start off with the very basic thing, which is mass. What is mass? Well, mass, there's a, you know, there's maybe two or three different definitions that you could use. Maybe the most academic one is a measure of an object's resistance to change in motion. The more mass you have, the harder it is to change your motion. Now, sometimes people like to say the amount of stuff something is made of. I like to use this definition in my class. It's the amount of matter that an object contains. All right, so the more massive you are, the more matter you have. And what is all that matter made of? The building blocks of matter, of course, atoms, and that includes protons, neutrons, and electrons. Okay, so the more massive, the more protons, the more atoms, and the neutrons, and electrons you have. When we write mass, we have an equation symbol. When you put mass into an equation, you use the equation symbol as m. Then we use the unit is the kilogram. Some people think, well, the base unit for mass is the gram. Well, in, uh, in science, chemistry, physics, uh, the base unit for mass is the kilogram. And we could write that down something like M equals 65 kilograms or M equals 12.5 grams. A lot of times when we're in school, we don't have kilograms of stuff. We have only grams of stuff. So we do use grams, of course, in other measurements. But when you put them values into the equations, it needs to be in kilograms, all right? And mass does not depend on your location, as your weight does, but your mass depend, does not depend on your location. Wherever you go, you always have the same amount of mass, all right? And you can see, for example, like here, this alien, this guy's big, and this alien, this guy is small. We can make the assumption that he's bigger, he's more massive, he's smaller, he has less mass. Now, mass, of course, the amount of mass also depends on your density and things like that. But for the two of the similar objects, the bigger you are, the more mass you're going to have. All right. Now, once we know your mass, then we can calculate your weight. All right. And when we calculate your weight, the weight is the force of attraction between two objects that have mass. So in order to have weight, in order for you to actually weigh something, you have to be on, in, in this case, on Earth because it's the force on an object due to gravity. In case the force of attraction between two objects. You have weight because you're on Earth and the Earth is pulling down on you. Now, the equation symbol, there's a different way. Sometimes people put a W. I don't think it's so good to put a W. I like to put FG, which is the force due to gravity, is the equation symbol that we use, such, such, such as, it, as in uh, Newton's second law, FG equals MG, as we'll go over in just a moment. And then, the unit is the Newton, named after Sir Isaac Newton, and we abbreviate that with a capital N. And we could write that down, the force of gravity, the weight of something is 15 Newtons, and the weight of something is 0 0.75 Newtons, okay? Your mass is measured in grams or kilograms. Your weight is a force, it's measured in Newton, and it does depend on your location. If you take your mass to the moon, you weigh less, you have the same mass. If you go way up in the air, then you're going to have the same mass, but there's, you know, you, because you're farther away from the Earth, then your force of attraction is going to be less, okay? Now, when we calculate the, uh, the, the weight, okay, then we have, for example, the Earth, and you have somebody that's on the Earth, okay, like Zombie Girl, she is attracted to the Earth 
because she has mass and the Earth has mass. And that force of gravity pulls straight down towards the center of the Earth. So we kind of use those two terms uh, interchangeably, that your weight is equal to your force of gravity. Now, a lot of people don't actually ask you, oh, what's your force of gravity? They ask you what your weight is. But really, it is your force of gravity between you and the Earth. And when we calculate weight, we use Newton's second law, but we use it in this form. Newton's second law says F equals MA, all right? And that's what we have here. But we like to use, when we're on Earth, FG equals MG, because we know that this is the acceleration due to gravity at the surface of the Earth. So this is the equation that you're going to use to calculate weight. Fg is the weight or the force of gravity, which is measured in newtons. M is the mass, which is measured in kilograms. And then G is the acceleration due to gravity or the gravitational field strength. And at the surface of the Earth, it's basically always 9.81 meters per second squared. All right. So you want to calculate weight. You put in the mass, you multiply it by 9.81, and you get your weight. Okay, so that's mass, and then weight. Now, we're going to talk about energy. We're going to talk about mechanical energy, and that's gravitational potential energy and kinetic energy. So gravitational potential energy is the next thing, of course. Now, in general, potential energy is stored energy. You can store energy when you stretch a rubber band. You store energy in food. You store energy in a battery. Okay, but when we talk about gravitational potential energy, this is our definition for gravitational potential energy. It's the energy stored by an object because of its position relative to other objects. Okay, so that is how you, that's the definition that we're going to use for gravitational potential energy. General potential energy is stored, but when we talk about gravitational, we use this definition. Okay, so the equation symbol that most people use when they talk about potential energy is PE, all right? You might see sometimes people write GPE for gravitational, or they put a G down here for gravitational, but we're going to use PE, and the unit is the joule. Energy is measured in joules. And again, you could write that down, for example, as the potential energy, PE, is equal to 575 joules, okay? You know, when we calculate gravitational potential energy, this is the equation that we use. PE, the potential energy, is equal to mgh. PE is obviously the potential energy, which is measured in joules. M is the mass. Now, when you put the number, the mass, into the equation, it must be in kilograms. If it's in grams, you need to convert it first to kilograms. And G, again, is the acceleration due to gravity, 9.81 meters per second squared. And H is the change in the height. In order to give something some change in potential energy, you're going to have to raise it up away from the Earth's surface, and you're going to have a change in height. Or it's going to be the height above a reference surface. Okay? Now, the main thing that changes something's gravitational potential energy is when its height changes. Of course, you could change the mass, but usually we have an object. In order to change its potential energy, we raise it up into the air. So, for example, if we have a rocket and it's at the surface of the Earth, if we want to increase its potential energy, give it more potential energy relative to the surface of the Earth, then we just raise the rocket up. We lift the rocket up. And it goes the same way with any object. You have something on the table, you have something on the floor, you want to give it more potential energy, then you just lift it up to a higher position. All right? That's gravitational potential energy. Now we have the other form of mechanical energy we're going to talk about, and that's kinetic energy. Kinetic energy is the energy of motion. In order to have kinetic energy, you need to be moving. You have to have some speed or velocity. Okay? Any object that is in motion has kinetic energy. All right, potential energy has to do mostly with your height. Kinetic energy has to do with your motion. The equation symbol that we will use is Ke for kinetic energy. And once again, since we're talking about energy, the unit is still the joule. James Prescott Joule, abbreviated with a capital J. And again, you can write down that something has a kinetic energy, for example, of 12,750 joules. 
like that. Okay. Now, when we calculate kinetic energy, this is the equation we're going to use. The kinetic energy is one half m v squared. All right. The kinetic energy K e is obviously the kinetic energy measured in joules. One half is simply one half. M is the mass; it needs to be in kilograms, and v is the velocity in meters per second squared. Now, it is a v. And I, do, I did write down here velocity, but a lot of times we say speed. Okay, we use kind of speed and velocity interchangeably, but you'll see something is going with, moving with such a velocity or something is moving with some speed of, you know, 10 meters per second. Then you have to put that into the equation. And you have to remember you have to square the velocity. It's only the velocity that's squared. One half mv squared, like that. Okay. And again, it has to do with your changes in motion or your speed. All right, now, for example, here we have a car. The car is standing still. It's not moving, okay? It does have some mass, but because it's not moving, <clears throat> excuse me, it has no kinetic energy. In order to give it kinetic energy, it has to move like that. And as it moves across the page like that, then it's going to have kinetic energy. All right, you got to be moving to have kinetic energy. All right, now, the next thing, we did energy. Now we're going to do work, all right? Now we're going to do work, and work is done when a force is applied through a distance. <clears throat> okay, you could write this down as a definition. It's kind of hard to come up with a definition for work, but work is done when a force is applied through a distance. A push or a pull is applied to an object, and the object moves. As you'll see, in order to actually do work, you have to apply a force. And when you apply a force to the object, the object has to be moving. The equation symbol for work is W, and the unit is the joule. Now, there's this thing, uh, the work energy principle, and when we talk about work and energy, we can enter, interchange work and energy, which we'll talk about later in another video. But it also has the same unit as energy, which is the joule, which is abbreviated with a capital J. And you could write down work. You did 75 joules of work like that. Okay? So that's energy work. And when we calculate work, this is the equation that we're going to do. The work is the force times the distance. Now, sometimes with this equation, you'll see it'll say cosine theta over here. In the basic class, the force and the distance are going to be in the same direction, so we're going to leave off the cosine of theta. So this is just the work is equal to the force that's applied times the distance the object moves. Once again, work is measured in joules. That's what W stands for. The force is the force, or excuse me, F is the force measured in newtons. And then, of course, D is the distance, which is measured in meters. If you are given the distance in kilometers or you're given the distance in centimeters, you need to convert first into meters. All right. Now, here we have Doris, the lunch lady. She's going to go shopping. She's got her ladle, ladle there. She's going to go shopping with her shopping cart. And in order to get into the store, she has to apply a force. Now, if she applies a force and the shopping cart doesn't move, then she's not doing any work on the shopping cart because she applies a force but the distance is zero, and the force times zero is just zero, like that. In order for her to be doing work, she has to apply a force, and the cart has to move. So when she pushes the cart across like that, then she's doing work. But once she stops, even if she's still applying the force, she's not doing any work. Okay? So that's uh, work and energy, and now we have power. All right, this is the last one. What is power? Now, I mean, a lot of people use power in, uh, in different ways, but for, for, for physics, power is the rate at which work is done. That's the definition, although you can maybe write this one down. Instead, it's how fast work is done. The faster you do work, the more power you have, or the higher the power output is, okay? So the equation symbol is a P, so when you put it into the equation, you have to use a P, and the unit is a watt like W-A-T-T, -T. the abbreviation for that is a capital W. Now, most people have heard of watts, as we'll talk about in just a moment when we talk about light bulbs, because you have a 40-watt light bulb, or maybe you have an appliance at home, 
and it's a thousand watt appliance, like maybe a hair dryer or something like that. So that's what the unit is. It's watts and power. You could write down as the power, for example, is 450 watts. That's how much power you would exert or that's the power output. Okay. So that's power. Now, when we calculate power, we use this equation. Power is equal to the work divided by the time. All right. Because we do work over time and that's how fast we do work. All right, if we do so many joules of work in 10 seconds, we just divide the amount of work, divide it by the time, and you get the power output. P is the power measured in watts. W is the work measured in joules again. Work is measured in joules. And T is the time. And you have to remember that the time has to be converted or has to be in seconds. Sometimes you get it in minutes or days or something like that at time. You've got to convert that into seconds. Okay, so there you go. That was a quick overview for those five important topics. I tried to go step by step. Start at the bottom and work your way up. And you start with mass and then weight and then energy, potential and kinetic, and then work and then power. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you found the video helpful. If you did, please do all of the following five things. Subscribe to my channel, Step by Step Science. Please support my YouTube channel. Uh, you should click on the notification so you don't miss anything, the notifications bell. You should give us a thumbs up. You should leave us a nice positive comment. And please don't forget to share this video. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you in the next video.